Hey, what's up everybody? It is almost election day coming up very, very soon. Bitcoin is coming back into the retracement levels, I believe. It's going to be very interesting. So let's jump into it. Um, right away, we see we were building a base in here, right? Pretty simple. And we broke out, right? And then we came all the way back down and now we're sort of back testing this base. Okay. So if it was a three wave move, right? Let's say we broke out one, two, three, and then we had an ABC correction for four, and then we broke out for five. If it was a three wave move, I would expect another hit to the high. But since it's five, you could see one, two, three, four, five. Then I'm saying this is an A, right? And now I wanna see a three wave move back to the upside in a B, and look, that's right around the election. Right. So just think 24 hours after the uh, after the election, there's probably a lot of chaos. Both sides are fighting. Right. I mean, putting conspiracies aside, there's going to be chaos. There's going to be, you know, things going on. Right. So I think that's when we start heading back down in an ABC. So that's basically it. I mean, nothing's really changed. The altcoins are kind of getting killed. Uh, I mean, they are really because of this move. So. I think we can get a little bit of an altcoin relief uh, coming up soon. Um, so, you know, we can probably capitalize on that. So anyways, let's let's just look at the the whole thing for a moment. So obviously there's a few ideas here. Um, one of them being that this is a one, two, one, two, right? And now here's another one, two. And if it is a one, two, then this should be an ABC pullback and we should continue higher, right? So one, two, one, two, this would be one, two of the third, and this wave should be the third of the third, four and then five, and that whole thing, right? So that's according to that idea. Now, that could very well happen because when you go back to the four hour chart, look, we're getting a pretty nice impulse right now. Look at that, look at that pump. We're still pumping, guys. Um, you know, I was looking at this about 20 minutes ago, and we were just, we we're about 68. I mean, we're still pumping, so that's that's a good sign. So we have one, two, three, four, five waves to the downside. Okay, so we want three waves to the upside, and then one, two, three, four, five waves to the downside. So a big ABC. So if we zoom out, right, and look at it from this perspective, and let's go even a little bit higher so we can get the whole th whole frame in the shot so a b c something like that and then we can continue higher and that'd be one two one two one two of the third third of the third fourth of the third fifth of the third and then we have four and then five so um yeah that's idea number one idea number two is that this is a diagonal one two three four five it's kind of like a rising wedge, right? It's not the greatest look because of the, the rising wedge look to it. But essentially what this diagonal means is that this is all of wave one. And now we're going to have a monster wave two, a big wave two, right? Something to counteract. So for example, let's take a Fibonacci retracement. We'll put it from the bottom. We'll go all the way to the top. We're looking at 61,000 for, you know, you basically take this right here, you go all the way up, right? And you cut it in half and you drag that all along. And look at that, that's a 50% area. So that's the target for the diagonal, which raises the alarm. If Bitcoin has to go all, that's a $8,000 drop where we are now. If Bitcoin has to go down all the way to 60K, 61k what the hell is going to happen to the altcoins if the altcoins are this fragile you can see the altcoins are bleeding and bleeding and bleeding right they're very fragile right now risk is off because there's a lot of uncertainty right the elections things like that they're also building a base altcoins are also creating in my opinion a wyckoff accumulation schematic in which they have to break the low to grab that liquidity we'll talk about that but essentially if this is a diagonal right and we have 
one, two, three, four, five, then we should get a B, C, a much larger A, B, C, and that would be wave one, one, two, and then we would go phenomenal. We, we would go up so fast and so hard and make your head spin. It would be a massive wave three. Because think about it. We've been going up, 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 up for a while, right? Since, you know, uh, let me get a different color here. Since back over here, right? Um, so essentially, you know, this whole thing is up, up, up. So what happens is you lose momentum. And especially when you, here's resistance, here's resistance, here's resistance, resistance, right? And you're basically getting wedged in here and you lose momentum. So what has to happen is the price is just look at it as one line, right? So basically just watch, I'm gonna do this and make it very easy. I'm gonna hide the price, right? So the price is hidden. Now just imagine one line up, okay? Yes, there's little pullbacks in there, but it whatever. Um, what happens is you get back to the resistance and you lose momentum. So you need to flag out. And what this does is it resets the oscillators. It resets the momentum. It resets liquidity. It, re it resets the volume profile. It basically resets the sentiment, right? The fear and greed index, things like that. And uh, most importantly, it resets the price. And it allows people that didn't participate to for this wave one, because most people miss wave one, right? To get back into wave two so that they are ready with their seatbelt on, ready for wave three, right? Better buckle up for wave three. It's going to be big. So here's the thing. Is this going to be a diagonal? Or is it going to be a one, two, one, two? And basically all we need right now is one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, five, and A, B, C. Probably getting us down here to around November 11th, 12th, around there. Build a little bit of a base and then go up very fast in the wave three of three. So that's the difference, right? Those are the two main ideas. And what I like about the diagonal is because you can kind of see a little bit of a shoulder, right? You see the head, and now we could probably create another shoulder, right? So here's your neckline. Um, you know, the price is coming down. I mean, you can see it pretty clearly, right? Inverse head and shoulders. And again, the right shoulder would reset the awesome. So there you go. Um, you can see the RSI. Let's look at the RSI like on the two-day chart. Yeah, see, the RSI on the two-day chart, you know, it's kind of creeping up, creeping up, creeping up, creeping up. But the problem is, is um, you can see here's the top, here's the top, right? You know, we're, we're, we're drastically going down. RSI is pretty much at the middle here. But then you can start to see... Um, a little bit of bearish divergence you can see it's it's very small it's nothing to be concerned about but what I would like to see anyways is for the RSI to kind of creep down a little bit and then push its way up right so um, you know that's that's the way I'm looking at it at, at the moment um, I mean, looking at the chart, it still looks very, very bullish. Remember, we have one, two, three, four, five, A, B, C. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. There's your three. And now we're flagging out for four. Look, we broke out. So we need to pull back and retest some of these areas, and then we can go into wave five. Once we fully expand into wave five, if, right, this is not financial advice. I could be totally wrong. We could go all the way down to 30k and if we did that that would essentially be massive capitulation that would be a black swan event i actually put a video ab about that uh it's called uh you know black swan event right if, if we got something like that because ever since you know c19 happened um there's always you know and even before that there's always on the lookout for other type of events 
And since all I'm saying is since it's an election year, since there's a lot of political forces at war, we could see some shenanigans, if you will, on maybe even both sides, right? So you just don't really know. Um, and it can really stir the pot of uncertainty, causing prices to be very volatile. I don't think it's going to go to 30K anymore. I, I really don't. Uh, the only way I would I would get on board with that is if we broke the low, right? And I guess you can say, right, here's three down, and then you have one, two, three up, right? And then you get one, two, three, four, five down, and then go, right? So that would be like an A, a B, and a bigger C. I don't like that um, count for a couple reasons one you know this wave is a little bit too big i mean i guess you can say a b and c right and there's three there and then you have one two three there's three there and then you get one two three four five i you know it is in the realm of possibility to get that um but if we start impulsing down very fast right specifically breaking this level here our way four because when you have a diagonal one two three four five and you get an abc pullback usually it comes right down to around way four so if we don't get this shape and if we get an impulse that breaks below and then we retest it as resistance then we can look at it as a bigger three-way move i don't think that's the case though i think it's either going to be a diagonal or this one two one two setup so if it is the one two one two setup, we should see a little bit of an ABC here, and then a break to the upside, and then boom boom, and then we would flag out for wave four, and then go up for wave five, versus, you know, flagging out now in a much bigger way, and then getting a much bigger wave out of it, right? So we'll see what happens. All right, that's enough for Bitcoin. Let's look at the weekly chart because it is Sunday. So that's the problem. That see, that's the problem we have. We have two and a half hours to get this weekly candle looking a little bit more sexy, right? Because right now it's you know it's looking a little bit you know, but that's that's what you would expect if it is a diagonal, right? So number one, we need to close above the these candles, this candle here specifically, right? Number two, I would love if we can close above this candle um which is right at 69.6k so we're really close i mean if the bulls are serious let me put a line there if the bulls are serious we could actually break out because this is the one i really wanted to close above which is this close here and then we have one more left right so if you know, this would be the third highest weekly close in Bitcoin's history. Still very significant. And we're still close. We still closed above this one. And obviously these down in here. Um, but the main one is this one and this one. So um, that's a pretty long wick. That's a rejection wick is what that is. That's why I don't like pumping in the beginning of the week. When we have these big Monday pumps and these big Tuesday pumps then I'd be like, okay, well, then what's going to happen Friday, Saturday? It's going to pull back, right? So it's better to pump towards the end of the week to get that stronger weekly close, right? And then the following week, you can see, right, when we had this weekly candle, big breakout, this candle here retested at 50%. So if this candle was this big, right, and we closed here, then the following candle would come down and retest it 50% more than likely before, you know, going higher. So, um, I mean, it's okay where it's at. Let's look at the four hour chart. So there you go. There's the line right there. So we got two and a half hours to go less by the time you're watching this video. Can we get a miracle? Can we get a miracle? Can I mean, we really don't have much time left. We need to flag out a little bit and we need to break out of there. I really would like to see us close above there. If we can't do it, then we, you know, obviously we got next week, right? But, you know, some of the issue is going to be is, is that wick, right? That's why I was hoping that, you know, when we break out, that this would come down fast, 
right? And then come back up and retrace, right? Not break the high, but at least give us a retracement. So I'm still expecting a retracement. Even if we don't get the weekly close, I'm, I'm still expecting a retracement. Look at that candle. Look at that daily candle. That's a bullish hammer candle right there. So it's looking pretty decent. Let's go to the eight hour chart. Or actually, let's turn on some indicators here. I mean, the ribbon looks good. Very, very nice on the daily. The bull market, look at the bull market support band. We are way down here. That's how much room we have. We have a lot of wiggle room. So the bull market support bands around that 63K area, looking really, really good. So as long as we hold above that, I say we're doing pretty well. Uh, let's see, the, in, uh, the uh, TD sequential here, we're on a three, but you know, it's, you know, we you saw this nine here, right? And we pulled back, we printed the red dots, we broke above, and now we're sort of back testing it right in here. That's a good sign. Let's look at the uh, four hour chart. So we made it to a seven. We didn't quite make it to a nine. That's okay. Um, but you know, it was oh, it's pretty close. Um, so what I would like to see again is if we can get back obviously there's a lot of resistance where we are and we're pretty oversold probably on the small time frames like if we zoom in to for example like let's go to the 30 minute chart uh let's remove that i mean it kind of looks like a flat boom 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 but if it is a flat i would love to see this i mean look at that three-way move i didn't even see that uh actually i have to zoom in a little bit more look at this right here look at that three-way move we had an impulse, we had an A, B, C. That was beautiful. And then we, we shot up really strong. So this is an A, B, C itself. This is only a three weight move. What we need to see is for this to flag out a little bit, just like this did, and then break out before we get to uh, the weekly close. So it's okay if we don't it's it's not a big deal per se it, it would just delay a little bit longer right so that's kind of what we have here on the weekly i mean there's a lot of examples too where you have these big wicks on top and it keeps pumping um but either way i feel like we're gonna get a small abc or a big one but ultimately we'll break out look at this candle right here this is a weekly candle right here and look at that big wick on the top. And we kind of, as you know, we kind of pulled, we pulled back a lot. But look at the following candle; it exploded, right? So, you know, this candle is looks a little bit worse, but you know, something similar could uh, definitely happen. Here's another example. Here is a big wick on the top, and we're still pumping. But it's not what you really want. It's not. It's, it doesn't give you the right look. Um, but don't think it can't happen because there's there are examples of it happening. We also have the two week candle close and this one's actually a little bit interesting because on one hand we are breaking above look at that we're breaking above these two and these but we already did last week anyway so you know we're, we're kind of stuck between this one and this one and we have this big doji candle so that doji candle is not the prettiest look right because if i invert it it looks bearish right it looks like we're we hit this high we have this doji it just seems like it needs to flag out and then you know reset that doji candle right so that's a two-week doji um you know it's you know you can see like there's some dojis in here for example but all in all the doji is trading above this candle right it would just be very cool if we can trade above 69.3 i mean we're only a couple hundred dollars away guys i mean let me let me make sure it's on the dot here uh we'll put it right there and now let's go to the let's go to the one hour and there's the price right there so if we can close above that line in the next couple hours right remember the time changed so it's a little bit different um so 
let's see if we can. All right. Um, but yeah, when, when I'm looking at the one hour chart, I see, let's put on, yeah. So we have some bullish divergence. Look at that. There's the divergence there, right? So we have one, two, three, four, and we have five. Okay. We have five waves and now we're starting to move our way back up. So if this is an ABC, it's going to look really good. So let's uh, keep tracking it. So the big thing is the altcoins, right? Look at Theta. It's been bleeding and bleeding and bleeding and bleeding and bleeding, right? It makes you feel like, oh no, the world is ending. But it's actually a blessing in disguise if you ask me. Look at this. You have this move here. Pump. Hit the low. Same thing here. Big move. Pump. Hit the low. Right? Three waves up. Let's see if we can build a base. Let's see if we can build a base. Um, so the idea here with Theta and most of the altcoins, right? I just I use Theta as an example for a lot of altcoins. So if, you know, if you're wondering why I'm always looking at Theta for the Theta community, number one, they've been one of the best supporters of my channel, so I owe them that debt of gratitude. And for myself, really, you know, because I'm a, I'm a Theta hodler. So you could see we had this little bit of a bear flag here, right? We had this three-way move up, and now we're kind of coming back down and retesting these lows, right? So what's happening here is, number one, um, right, we're retesting the lows. Look at this. We have a three-way move, right? And like I said last week, I... I'm not sure, we weren't sure if the three wave move was finished because we have one, two, three, and that's your three wave move, but then we went down a little bit more, it's still a three wave move. We can go down even a little bit more and it could still be a three wave move, right? Um, we don't want it to go too far, right? As long as we're in this vicinity right in here, right? As long as we don't break below that blue box, below the bottom part, I say we're doing pretty good. Reason why is because I'm looking at it like some type of Wyckoff accumulation. Now there's two different accumulation schematics. Um, it'd probably be better if I used the other one, but essentially what we have is we have this move up, this move up, move down, move down, come back up, come back up. And then we kind of drizzle along here, right? We drizzle along and here's your bottom. So we could, we could pierce the bottom. We could have a big liquidity grab right down in there and then start to come back up, right? And what that's doing is it's building a proper base, right? So let me actually go to the uh, six hour chart and then we'll, we'll look at it a little bit cleaner here. So um, let me take on a base right in here there we go somewhere about there but this is the one we probably should be paying attention to right so let me remove that one it's the same thing it's just a little bit different um, it's still Wyckoff accumulation right and what you can see is right in here we're pump we're going down down and it's kind of like a creek it, it makes you think like it's going to fall forever but what it's doing is it's just basically coming back down to the bottom of the base trying to it's searching for liquidity right because if this thing needs to make its way up into a big retracement then it's going to need a lot of liquidity backing it and the only way you can do that is is basically have big discounts like imagine you know there's a big discount like it's Black Friday or something, you know, uh, you know, there's some big major sale going on at a, at a store, right? A lot of people capitalize on that and, you know, they buy, right? So that's kind of how what's what's happening for the altcoins is we're kind of getting like a Black Friday type of deal coming up here. And uh, with the election, with the end of the year, with with Bitcoin at all time highs, it makes it a little bit interesting. So. Um, anyways, uh, we have, um, we have this move, obviously this move here, this move here, come back down, 
right? Hit the high, hit the high, and then we're creaking down, right? We grab that liquidity. So what we could see maybe is one little pump to the upside and then a knock back down, right? So that would be one, two, three, four, and five. And that would be it. That would be that would be the end right right around there. We would come down, right? So we have uh, an ABC, A, B, C, right? And in the C wave, you need five waves, okay? But we, we never had five waves. All we have is one, two, and now this is three. So we still need four and five, right? So let's hope that it's more of a diag than more of an impulse. But basically what that does, right, is it gets us back down here, just like the spring, right? And then we start to curl up, play around a little bit, eventually work our way back up and then continue higher. So you're basically, you built the base, right? Bottom to top, back to bottom. So it's kind of like a triangle, right? Um, so there, like I said, there's a lot of empty space down here and now it's starting to fill it in. Um, so when we zoom out a little bit, like let's go to the 10 hour chart. Um, by the way, did you guys vote? Make sure you guys get out and vote, man. I mean, don't take it for granted, please. It, just go and vote. It doesn't matter who you vote for. Just vote for somebody. Because if you don't vote, what they do is they basically look at all the people who didn't vote and they take they take your name and they'll vote for you, right? They, they could take your social security number and vote. And you go, oh, that's impossible. That'll never happen. But believe me, I've seen... A lot of things going on, man, and it's it's very interesting. So just be, uh, you know, be very vigilant. Is all I'm saying. Um, but yeah, when it when it comes to theta and the altcoins, the way I'm looking at it is still the same, still the same, right? And for this, I would actually go up to like the daily. Um, and we don't need this anymore, so I'll get rid of it. You guys already know Wyckoff um, very well. So the whole idea is this is a big wave to the downside, right? So we go up, we come all the way back down. So what's more logical, continuing to go down or going back up? Right. Waves don't just go down, 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 down. They don't. Right. I mean, unless they're in a full fledged bear market. Um, so the way I'm looking at it is one, two, three, four, five. Right. And then we're sort of we got a little bit of a three wave move here, three up. And then we have three down. Right. What happens after three down? We get five up one, two, three, four, five. And we get back into the retracement levels. Okay? So this is 5. That's A. Right? And then we have... Let's do a different color. And then we have 1, 2, 3. That's B. Right? And then what we can do from there is either number 1, we can flag out for a 4 and then, you know, continue higher. If this is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we can very well do that. Or what we can do is once we get into the retracement levels, we kind of come down a little bit, maybe back test this area, kind of consolidate a little bit into for reaccumulation, right? So reaccumulation, um, and essentially, uh, you know, so we have a rise, crash, retrace, we come down into reaccumulation, we go sideways, we break out, right? But how could you even think about breaking out when we're all the way at the bottom of the bottom of the bottom of the barrel? I mean, look at this. We're literally at the bottom, guys. Bottom, bottom, bottom. So, um, you know, that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, for example, like if Bitcoin needs to have that much bigger move to the downside and theta is only right here, 
then we could see something a little bit bigger than Wyckoff. Unfortunately, I know that's not what we want, but that's, you know, we have to go based on what the data says, right? Back then, you know, the, the, the more data we get, the better, right? And the, the way I see it is we have three up and we have one, two, three down. Now, here's the thing. If we pull up and we get rejected, and then we make another wave to the downside. It could be, um, obviously, it, it could be something other than Wyckoff, meaning, right, we, you would count it a little bit different, meaning you would have one, two, and then you would say one, two, three, four, five. That's three, so you have one, two, right? And then you have one, two, three, four, five. That's three. And then you have three up, that's four. Right, and then you have one, two, three, four, five down. That's five. If we got something like that, guess what? I'm looking at a massive retracement. So it's really, it really depends. Is it going to be a Wyckoff schematic, right? Because you got a, you're a hodler, just like me. I'm a hodler, right? I'm also a trader. I get in and out. But for for my hodlers out there, I mean. This is the time to really think about, you know, if, if you're like feeling the pain and you're feeling feeling the struggle. First of all, this is crypto, right? We, 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 we know what we're getting into before we even get into it. But if you have that longer term uh, vision, if you understand what you hold, if you understand how powerful it is. Yes, the, the price is not what you want, but at the end of the day. The price is what the price is. And ultimately, we have to think not tomorrow or the next day, but even weeks, months down the line. So, and for me, the way I look at it as a hodler is very simple, right? We were building this base down in here, right? We broke out and now we're back testing it. So you can see right there, right? This is basically the range of that base. So from the top to the bottom, there's your base. There's your range, I should say, not a base. That's your range. So what we're doing is you can see that wick. It tagged it. It came back up. It touched the top. And now it's coming back down, potentially touching the bottom. But as long as we hold in this range, we don't want to break this. If we start breaking that, then everything's going to change. Everything's going to change, meaning that we you know if we break this then we could go all the way back down to the lows i don't think that's going to happen i'm that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is you know if push comes to shove and we start just rapidly crashing which i don't think is going to happen um we could end up retesting that low so we have three up right problem is we don't have three down we just have a straight line down so even if it wanted to be super super bearish you have three up. You you kind of need you kind of need it to come back up and then come back down. You see what I mean? This gives me that's why it gives me the impression that this wave is almost finished. So you know um, you got three up, you got three down. Eventually, this wave here is gonna finish and we're gonna curl back up. When we curl back up, that's the secret. That's the trick because we will, trust me, we will curl back up at some point once this wave is finished. When we do, that's going to be the test. Can we get through here? If we start coming back down, right, then I'm going to look at it as a flat. So one, one, two, three, and then we have a flat for a four, and then we get five and then go, right? But I, I, I really don't think that. I'm just, the reason I'm leaning, the reason I'm a little more bearish now, I mean, not bearish, but the reason I'm, I'm saying these other things is because if Bitcoin is in the diag, right, let's just put it up, right, and we have one, two, three, four, five, and if Bitcoin needs a, th a three-way pullback, right, maybe we get a little bit of a bounce and then we come down, well, what do we have? Well, it looks like, let me make it a little bit smaller. It looks like we have one, two, and then this would be three, this would be four, and then this would be five. So it's kind of like an ending diag in here, 
right? And then that would break us out of there. So that's my main idea. That's what I'm thinking. That's that's exactly what I'm thinking. And this also falls under the Wyckoff schematic, right? So if Bitcoin has to do this, then I'm expecting bleeding and, and theta, right? So that's kind of where we are here. Um, now, this... I'm excited. I don't know about you guys, but I'm even though we're at the lows, even though it, you know the all coins are blue, I'm very excited for the future, right? Because you know when Bitcoin gets right back to the all-time high, and nobody really, yeah, you know, there nobody's really caring. The all coins are still kind of bleeding. That tells me that the market is still unsure. That means the the sentiment is still in the gutter. That means. We're very early. That means it's not, that means, um, you know, things are about to change, right? If everybody was euphoric and everybody was bullish and Bitcoin's breaking out, then that gives me a little bit more, it, it makes things a little bit more nervous. It gives me more nervous. So if we have a pullback, if, if, if people are bearish now, think about when Bitcoin gets a pullback. And everybody's going to be really bearish. But then once that pullback's over, we're going to fly to the upside. Right. Um, I believe we're going to break out massively. And I believe a lot of people are not going to expect it because people are being complacent. People are being conditioned to believe we're going down, down, down. Think, look at Theta. Look at it. We've been going down since September. This whole way we've been going down, 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 down. So all of September, or I would say the end of September, all of October, right? And now November. So basically a little over 30 days. We've been going down, 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 down. And then more than that, we've been going down since March, right? Back over, or was that April? You know, March, or the end of March. So we've been going down, 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 down. With these little waves, little waves, little waves. But overall, we're going down. So what that does is that psychologically puts it people in displacement. It puts... You know, you got to look at it from the psychological perspective, right? So, and for me, I use Elliott waves to kind of count and figure out the timing of it. And I'm letting you know, you, you don't have to believe me, but I'm letting you know, I think we're getting very close. So that's why I'm excited. That's why, you know, I'm, I'm a hodler. I don't care, you know, if we go down a little bit more. I mean, it is what it is, right? So... Um, let's look at the smaller time frames and let's see if we can see anything. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. We had one, two, three, four, five. Look at that little pin bar. Um, look at that little, uh, doji candle there. And now we're starting to pump, right? So you have one, two, three, big wave up. One, two, three. Maybe we get another big wave up and then we come down. That's one, two, three, four, five. So uh, let me zoom out a little bit. Uh, we can take, we get rid of that. Yeah, so the big thing is this wave is finished. This wave is finished. The only wave left, you know, depending how you count it, right? This could be one, two. And then we have one, two, three, four, five. And that's one, two, three, and then we get four, and then five. If you want to count it that way, right? If you want to, it, the, basically the most bearish way to count this, right, would be one, two, and then you have um, one, two, three, four, five. Right, and then you flag out for four, so that's one, that's two, all of that's three, that's four, and then you get one, two, three, four, five. Which could, you know, which would kind of break this low here. So you would get three up, and then you would finish kind of like at a channel here. You're channeling down, channeling down, channeling down, and then what happens? You break out massively, guys. So that's what I'm saying. Um, you know, I can't, I can't give financial advice. I can only tell you what I'm thinking and what I'm doing. And that's kind of how I'm thinking here, right? And nothing's ever changed. I, this is still, we're still building a base, right? If, the, if this has to come lower, 
to get us out, that that's a Wyckoff spring. That's still building a base, right? So that's kind of how I'm looking at it. Now, another way you can say is we have one, two, three, four, five, and then we have um, A, B, C, right? And then you have uh, what looks like one, two, three, four, five. It's not the prettiest, but basically what you have is an ABC. You have a three-way move to the downside. Now, could this come one more low? Yes, right? The reason why is because you can see, um, let's see if we can see it here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I mean, you can't really see the wave definition, but that's why I just count it as an ABC and ABC. So could we get one more ABC? One, two, three, four, five? Yes, we can. And if we got that, it would be kind of like, like a falling wedge, like you're kind of wedging in here before you break out. So all I'm saying is, you know, for me, it's, it's, you know, dollar cost averaging is, is basically the strategy on how to play this. Um, that doesn't mean we can't go lower. You got to be smart with the money you have. I mean, you work for your money. You know exactly how much you make. You know exactly how much you can spend. All I'm saying is, you know, for me, it's best to be conservative but at the same time, don't miss out on opportunities just because, you know, when, when you feel a certain way, it's sometimes it's the opposite of what's happening, right? Like, for example, when we were charging up here in April and we were super bullish, right? Boom, 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 boom. Look how it ended, right? Look how it ended. And I remember a lot of people were still believing that we could go even higher, including myself. I thought we could, you know, continue higher as well. Um, but the reason why I believed, you know, we needed a pullback is because we had five ways. One, two, three, four, five, right? So let's get an A, B, C, and let's continue to go. But we, but look, when we got the A, B, C, we didn't get one, two, three, four, five. We only got a three-way move. So I said, okay, maybe we're building a base. Right. Let's build a base. And you can see how that ended up. Right. We built the base. But look, we had to come all the way back down to back test this entire range. But what I'm saying is a lot of people believed we could keep going up. So what I'm saying is a lot of people think, oh, we can keep going down. Right. So if I flip this upside down and I go, let's go to like. You know, like if I flip it upside down, you can kind of see like how we curled up. You know, we're building a base in here. And what happened is we came down, we grabbed that liquidity, and that was it. That was the top. And then we started going down. So, you know, if we flip that right side back up, I mean, you can see that was the top. So if we translate that to the bottom, you can kind of see, you know, something in uh, very similar here. So... Let's see how it all plays out. Um, let's go to the weekly chart. So obviously the weekly's bearish, right? You had a big fat red candle. And I mean, this is the lowest weekly candle for theta since going all the way back to the beginning of the year, back in February, right? So, you know, crypto's been getting pretty killed during... Uh, the last year of of this election cycle so um and that's kind of what happens you know when you look at every four years after the halving after the election that's usually when things start to kick up into high gear and you, again you can see this flag here and we came right back down to the bottom this is usually where we should get a bounce somewhere in here again we could go a little bit further a little bit further but ultimately we're going to need the bounce when we get that bounce that's when we need to pay attention and see what it looks like does it look corrective does it look impulsive does it look like it's you know getting back in an action you know what i mean so um yeah ultimately when, once this is finished 
I'm expecting a retracement back to the upside. And I'm standing by that and I'm putting my money where my mouth is on that. So uh, let's let's move on here. And when I'm, when I'm talking about theta, I'm talking about all of them, basically. So um, let's do a little bit of a rapid fire here. Let's go to XRP. XRP also has a very low weekly candle close. Um, but you can see how you see how this one's big and this one's a little smaller and you can see the wick on this one is actually longer than the wick on this one that's how you know momentum slowing down to the downside right so I'm still looking at it very bullish for XRP um, so if we go to the four hour chart look at the four hour um, What's what's the idea? Well, it's still the same thing, guys. It's one, two, three, four, five. There's your one. And then you have three down. There's your A. And then you have three up. There's your B. And then you have one, two, three, four, five down. There's your C. And then you have this little pump, and then now it's kind of creeping back down again. Maybe we're, you can see, maybe we're creating a base in here. Look at that. We had one, two, three, four, five. We came all the way down. That was a finished fifth wave. You know, when I look at XRP, it looks a little bit more clear, to be honest, because you have one, two, three, and then you have four, and then you have one, two, three, four, five. That's five. So one, two, three, four, five. Done. And then you pump to the upside, and look what we did. Instead of impulsing back down, look what you did. You had a three wave move down. You had one, two, three. So if this turns into four and this turns into five, right, then we want to see a three-way pullback. And if we get that three-way pullback, how does it react in the retracement levels, right? If it's finished now, that's even better. You get three up, you get three down, and what comes next, right? You're building the base, right? Three up, three down, and then you kind of curl around. One, two, three, four, five. You play around in here and then continue your Wyckoff little scenario. That's your Wyckoff scenario right there. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, I think sellers are getting very exhausted. And I think all coins are too under... Look at Bitcoin dominance. I mean, at what... You know, people are swapping their all coins for Bitcoin. That's fine. But why would you do it at the very, very top of where things should reverse? Doesn't mean it's going to reverse today or tomorrow. But... You know, it's getting pretty high up there as far as Bitcoin dominance. I mean, it can continue going up, but, uh, you know, that's that's for everyone else to figure themselves out. So, um, but yeah, I like the daily chart. I'm looking at this, you know, it's a weird looking flag, but you can see it. Like if you get rid of this and get rid of that, remove the noise you can see a nice orderly downward channel and that's exactly what you want. Um, let me see if I could do it like this, there you go. Okay, and let's put that right there. Yeah, see that's, that's bullish, right? When you have a channel, when you have, first of all, you have a f impulse, not only an impulse, but you have a five wave impulse, one, two, three, four, five. This is an impulse. Right, and now we're sort of channeling down here as Bitcoin's at its all time high. This tells me once this starts, once it's done waning down, you know, I think we're gonna break out. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. Um, now let's talk bearishly that we I gave the bearish scenario for theta, let's give it for 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 XRP. Well, if it's if it really wants to be bearish. Then the way I see it is we have one, two, three, four, five. That could be A. And then we have one, two, three. That could be B. And then we have one, two, three, four, five. That could be C. So one, two, three, A, B, C. Right? And that would sort of finish. And then we would go higher. But that would bring us down in the mid 40s, which we don't want, but that's that's the reality. So be on the lookout for something like that. Um, yeah, so if that's a three wave move down, and this is one, two, three waves, and there's your connector, right? So, yeah, um, 
let's zoom out a little bit. Because when I mean, come on, when you when you zoom out here, it's very bullish. The reason why is because look, you have three up, three down, and then you have one, two, three, four, five. That's an A B C, guys. That's an A B. That's a perfection A B C. And then what you have is you have also another A B, and then you have one, two, three, four, five for C A B C. So you have three up, you have three down, and then what do you have after that? You have this impulse to the upside number one and then it comes all the way back down at back test it creates this super bullish wick right and then now we're flagging out remember what i say flagging out flagging out and that's what we've been doing this is a big flag and and this is a flag within a flag if you want to know the truth so i think so um but yeah let's let's move on a little bit here um ti and, and, and just real quick, um, we can't forget about the elephant in the room, which is this unbelievable chart right here. I mean, look at this. I mean, look what happened the last time. You can see it very clearly here. Look at this. What were we, what were we doing the last time? We were flagging out, flagging out, flagging out, flagging out. Liquidity grab. Right. And that's what it's. And then before you know it. Right. We were flagging out. Everyone was depressed and it's going lower. We were breaking the low here. Right. So here's your range. And we were right at the bottom of the range. And you can see right here. Um, actually, let me what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this. I'm going to remove that. And I'm going to take this. I'm going to show you something right there. And then I'm going to remove this circle. You could see right here, we, we broke below it. So we were flagging out, flagging out, and then bam, we blasted off. Well, gee, doesn't that look familiar right now? Let's take a look. So if we look at what's going on right now, right, let me get rid of that. And then we go up a little bit higher. You can see something very similar. I mean, obviously we had it here, right? But uh, what we're doing right now is we're flagging out we're flagging out in here just like the last time so once this is done i want to see a massive explosion to the upside now is it possible we could break a little bit lower below this area yeah it is but honestly it's you know what whatever right whatever ultimately this is a three-wave move this is an impulse. Once this third, once this move is finished, I'm expecting a big move to the upside. So uh, it might not feel like it. it. It might feel like, oh, there's no way. I, I mean, how can you justify it? I mean, how how, do, how does this make sense? Well, it does. You know, I don't have to spell it out for you, but that's just the way I'm seeing it. Um, I've been in this market since mid 2017, and I've dealt with a lot of things i had to learn the hard way but over time you start to feel and you start to understand what's what's really going on so um rise crash retrace reaccumulation sideways blast off rise crash retrace reaccumulation sideways we're just waiting it's a it's a ticking time bomb tick tock tick tock tick tock eventually it's gonna go right so I mean, that's just the way I see it. So let's keep moving on. Um, I mean, let's look at Axelar. Look at Axelar. We built a base. Look at this. We came, uh, we sort of broke out and now we're coming back down. We're sort of back testing in here, right? So let's see if we can keep pushing higher unless this is gonna be an ABC and then push higher. Uh, let's look at Bohm. Boom. Uh, let's go down. Let's let's see if we could do the two-day chart. Um, kind of flagging out here. You broke out. You got a little bit of a back test here. Let's see if we can hold and build a base and reverse. If Bitcoin is going to do the diagonal, we could see A, B, C, and then go. And that's kind of what I think, too. I think that's what's going to happen. Um... 
Sui. I mean, that looks like it looks like we have an A. It looks like we have a B. Let's get a C, A, B, C, and then go. If this breaks out now, then it was a flat. So, ICP. ICP finally broke down. That's what we wanted, right? You can see right there. So A, B, C. Remember, I had we had three up, and now we want three down. We want to get back down here just like the theta did, right? And then eventually we could do a Y coffin here, but eventually, you know, we get that liquidity grab, and then we start moving our way back up. Um, Zcash is a little bit challenging simply because you're in the retracement level it can go either way maybe an abc you continue higher maybe we have to come back down in here right so it's a little bit challenging that one uh let's see cfx same thing like you have three up and then you come all the way back down to support 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 so maybe we dip a little bit lower but ultimately let's go right if we dip a lower and then we come back up and then we get rejected in here, then we could keep going even a much lower. And then that's when I come out and we reevaluate. But right now, I don't see anything to think that. Um, not really interesting. Biocoin is very tight. And I like when things get real tight because it tells me a big move's coming. So... Anytime you have a base like this, what happens is, just like the, the theta chart, what happens is you break lower and then you quickly reverse and go up. That's This chart reminds me of that so much. Like it looks like a three-way move, but it looks like we drop down and then we kick butt. For example, kind of like uh, you know CRV, what CRV did, it kind of built a little base, it fell down and then it impulsed back and now it kind of flags out before it goes higher. Um, so yeah, I mean, we have a clear three up, right? And then we have sort of three back down, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I mean, it could turn into four and five, and we could drop quick and then reverse quick. So look out for that. Matic, I mean, Matic still, I mean, we made a brand new low today. Um, you got bullish divergence though, um, but I don't think any on the higher time frames. no. So you don't have any bullish divergence. I mean, same thing with Matic. You can see we built a base here and look how low we're dropping. This is not a liquidity grab, this is a whole new wave. And that's what we gotta be careful with with some of the altcoins. I mean, you know, if, if it could happen to Matic, why not, you know, Theta, right? We have a big glow like this, but I'm telling you, once this is done, it's gonna go very fast to the upside. Remember, altcoins take a long time to go down, but look how fast they take to go up. I mean, look at this move. It went all the way from 30 cents all the way to two dollars and in just a couple weeks i mean look at that look at that it took two days to go up you know 115 percent right so where i'm at right now i mean we could go up 120 percent or or so in 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 two days right i mean it you know that would bring me all the way back up to right about 60 cents, you know, if, if, if that was the case. So I think those days are, are coming. I mean, it's, it's taken a while and I think there's more pain to come, but I think ultimately it's, it's, it'll be here soon. Like AVAX, you have three up and then you have one, two, three down, but I would like this to come down a little bit further, you know, and meet back up here and then come up and then go. So Tia did it exactly too. So we have an impulse and look at this, we have a three wave pullback, right? Support, 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 support. So it could actually go down even a little bit more and still hold this low, even a little bit more and still hold the low. But ultimately I think it's gonna curl around. You got a shoulder, you got a head, and now I think it's 
creating that right shoulder. So, I mean, this could happen within a couple of months. So we'll, we'll see about that. But anyways, guys, that'll do it for this video. Hopefully um, you found it useful. If you want to see some of the stuff. Oh, real quick, before I let you go, total three. We have a three-way poop down. But look, it can honestly come a lot lower. It could come all the way back down to here. Right? Which is what? Like 540, 30 billion or so. And then curl up and then go and create that base. So why cough accumulation, right? But, you know, the weekly, chan the weekly chart looks good. You know, we, we're... We're flagging out, we broke out, and now we're sort of flagging out again. So, if you haven't, uh, you can uh, follow me on X. I mean, I, I put a couple things out here. Uh, breaking guilty of election fraud after ordering fake ballots, Wisconsin. I mean, you can look at that. There's another one, Doge Designer, who Elon Musk tweets all the time. Says, just a reminder, Elon Musk has create, created an X community de dedicated to exposing voter fraud and election if you have videos and information post them right so here's another one reminder to those committing voter fraud when trump wins you're going to prison um this is a video and i don't remember how it goes exactly but look at this guy he's bordering it up he doesn't want people to see um but anyway, you can go ahead and watch that. There's a lot of things that are wrong with that video. Uh, there's another post. Look at this. Election fraud in Dallas, Texas. Found folded up piece of paper on the ground outside that had username and password for the poll books. Wow. There's widespread election fraud in every single state. Mass arrest must happen. I mean, look at this. I mean, people go undercover like Project Veritas and they try to expose all this stuff basically i said look either trump wins in a landslide and they'll blame election interference or they'll print so many ballots that kamala wins but it's way too big to, to rig making the election look totally distorted distorted and numbers not matching up aka election fraud people are watching and recording right here's another one here pay to vote i mean people getting paid i think a lot of these illegal aliens i mean if you look at all the blue democratic cities right like here's the heat man of pennsylvania you can see all that red and just a little bit of blue but where the blue is is where the cities are that's where you have a lot of the people right so that's why they want to get rid of the electoral college because there's so many people in these cities but a lot of them are illegal immigrants they're criminals they you know a lot of them um and not only that but there's a lot of fraud in the cities like when you go into the, some of these cities in in pennsylvania there's a lot of different uh you know the fraud happens in the cities not in the counties right not not out in these districts where not a lot of people live they happen where all, where the population is very concentrated because they can get away with it, right? So you have all, all of this red, a little bit of blue, but the Democrats, they still win, right? How does that even make sense? Well, again, they have more population in the blue areas. But also, I mean, you can see right here what Trump tweeted out. I mean, you can pause it and read it. Here's another thing he tweeted out, too. You could pause it and read it. Joe Biden's like, come on, man. So I've, I've showed this before. Look at all that red. That's a lot of red. Mm -hmm. And you're telling me that they win by the popular vote? And you can see these are all where the illegals are. These are where the big cities are, right? And th this, is, this is their Democrat-run places, right? So like a lot of these, you know, people in the cities voting Democrat – for 20 30 years and look where it's gotten them gotten them absolutely nowhere i mean republicans too i mean both sides right i mean the the whole problem with the country is the financial system that's what it all boils down to but that's a conversation for another day but you can see the heat map here right this is the percentage of undocumented immigrants and when you overlay that that's exactly where all the democrats are 
right? So that's why they had the borders open. They flooded this country, drained our resources only to keep themselves in power, to sway the vote, right? Because they promised some driver's license. They promised them uh, an apartment and food stamps and things like that. So it's insane, man. It's totally insane. Like, you know, we shouldn't be sending money to Ukraine. We should be helping our own people, you know? That's why we need voter ID. I mean, come on, you need ID for all of these things, but not to vote. It's crazy. So anyway, let's just sit back, relax, and let's see what happens. Remember, we still have some bullish fractals to look. I mean, we're, we're tracking here. Like, for example, you could see, um, you know, Dogecoin, right? What Dogecoin did, and I've shared this before. And we're flagging out, flagging out, flagging out, flagging out. And then, bam, we hit the high, right? So, uh, break out into a massive new all-time high. So, yeah, I really like this fractal a lot. So, you can see we're still right in here. We can go down a little bit more. But ultimately, I think uh, I think this fractal is going to play out. And it's all going to be um, associated with the election, the stock market, the dollar, Bitcoin, and things like that. But uh, anyways, get out and vote, and I will catch you guys on the next one. Cheers. If you want to save crypto, and if you want to fire Gary Gensler, I mean, you know what you got to do. So, all right, guys. I will catch you on the next one. Cheers.